Hi everyone, here is a 2D rig that simulates a 3D head turn in Blender Grease Pencil. In the last video, we saw how to apply a basic rig. In this video, we'll animate our head turn actions, set up action constraints and their control bone. We'll also add some improvements to the rig and finally create mouth shapes using a time offset modifier to prepare us for lip syncing. Welcome back if you've been following along. This video is one of four detailing the character's creation from sketch to model to rig and finally covering the animation workflow. Since our last video, you might notice that I've added some custom shapes for our control bones. If you would like to know how this was achieved, I've left a link to a tutorial in the description. So back to where we left off. We can move the eyes, the eyebrows, and even the glabella lines can move up and down. Before we dive into the head tone, we'll get accustomed to the concepts of action constraints. We'll do this by creating a blink control, and using the techniques we learned there, we'll be ready to move on to the head tone. Once we've done that, we'll add some little detail bones just to add some definition to the head tone. These will affect the nostrils and chin, but hopefully you'll be able to add whatever you need. Finally, we're going to make all of the mouth shapes and we'll add control for that. Let's get going. Okay, so first of all, we add a new action for the blinks. Under the Dobe Sheet Editor in Action Editor Mode, we'll create a new action and we'll call this action Blink. Then, selecting the deformation eye bones, we'll press I to insert a keyframe, and select Scaling, making sure you're on frame 0. Then, on frame 50, we'll press S for Scale, and Z for the vertical axis, and bring the size way down. Then, before setting the new keyframe, we'll scale it along the X axis, pressing S, and then X. Then we press I and select Scaling. Now you can see that the blink action animates correctly. To make sure that the eyes will scale at a constant speed, it's important to select all of the keyframes by hovering over the dobe sheet and pressing A, then press T to open the interpolation menu and we select the linear option. We can then apply any easing in and out when animating the actual control bone. Finally, we repeat this step for the other eye. There you go. Now, we will add an eye wide open pose. To do this, we select all the keyframes and shift them 50 frames across by pressing G and typing in 50. And on frame 0, we scale the eyes so that they are open to the extreme. This means we will be able to stretch the eyes further for certain expressions. Now, the animation starts wide open moves through the rest pose at frame 50, then to the blink pose at frame 100. Leaving the action editor at frame 50 for the eye's rest position, we go to the control bone layer and add two blink control bones and a base bone to move the controls around. We name them appropriately. Now we're going to add a limit location constraint on each of the control bones. Check all the axes, both minimum and maximum, and set these values appropriately for the y-axis. I used negative 0.5 for the minimum and positive 0.5 for the maximum. Leave the x and z values as zero. Finally, we make sure we set the right space setting on the constraint to use local space. Now we will copy the constraint to the other blink bone. We'll do this by selecting the blink bone without the constraint, then shift select the blink bone with the constraint. Press F3 and search and select copy constraints to selected bones. After we ensure our parenting is correct, we can try them out by moving these bones like a little slider. Now let's make them control the action. To do this, we'll select one of the deformation eye bones. Under the constraint tab, we'll add an action constraint that targets the corresponding control bone. Set the action parameter to the desired action, in this case, blink. 
choose to use the control bone's local Y location to drive the action. Set the target range to the minimum and maximum positions for the control bone. In our case, we set this to negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. These values correspond to the action range values. When the control bone's local Y position is equal to negative 0.5 or the minimum, we want the frame of animation to be zero. And when the bone is at positive 0.5, we want the animation to be at frame 100. So we set the values for action range to zero and 100. Now we repeat the process, except we target the other control bone. With that done, the blink sliders control the blink action. Now that we understand how action constraints work, let's get moving with the head turn. We'll start off by making two control bones, the base and the one that we'll use as the target for the constraints. To that bone, we'll add a limit distance constraint that targets the base head turn bone. This means that the control bone won't be able to move too far away from the base bone. We set the distance parameter to 0.5. So with that done, we'll make a new action called head turn.l. Now, all we have to do is animate the character turning. We're going to start with the nose. You could have auto keyframe on, but just for organization's sake, I prefer, when making the actions, to leave it off. When creating the actions, make sure to set all the interpolation to linear. Here I'm going through each of the glabella line bones and checking the offset option on the copy location constraints so that they can be animated in the actions. But if you followed the last video, you'll see that this ends up causing problems and I show you how I solved it by adding another set of bones for the glabella lines there. Basically, we go through all of the bones and animate the head turning to the left. When animating the eyes within the action, it's important to use the mechanism bones as opposed to the deformation or control bones. Another popular method for head turns in Blender Grease Pencil is to use copy location constraints or drivers. But what makes this method appealing is the fact that you can put keyframes in the middle. In this example, we use this to move the character's left ear to the right until the middle of the animation, then back to the left in the second part of the animation. This would be problematic with copy location constraints. We also move the left ear along the y-axis to bring it in front of the face. We do the same for the hair. So now we'll start the process of adding the action constraints. Once again, we'll start with the nose. Selecting the top section of the nose, we set up an action constraint, targeting the control bone's local x location. We set up the other values, and we can see that as we move the control bone left and right, the action is displayed, but only for the one bone. So now we'll copy the constraint over to the other bones. Select the other bones that have been animated in the action, then shift select the top nose bone, press F3, search for and select copy constraint to selected bones. If any of the bones have other constraints attached to them, you'll either have to apply the action constraints to them individually, or using a more organized way, you could copy the bone. Parent the original bone to the copy and separate the two constraints to affect each bone separately. The action constraints on the copy and the other constraints on the original. This is what we end up doing for the glabella lines and the eyes. Now you can see the left turning works for all the bones. Usually we wouldn't copy the constraints to the other bones until we had animated all four of the actions and applied the corresponding constraints to the nose bone. I did this here just to show how it will work. Now that we've animated turning left, right, up and down, each on their own action, we set up all the action constraints on the nose bone and copy the constraints again. You can see that the control bone is operational. 
we now have a fully functional head rig complete with a head turn. However, to refine our rig, we can add a few more deformation bones. Here, we're going to add them for the nostrils and the chin, but you can add as many as necessary. First, we're going to add four bones to the nostrils. Then, on the nose lattice, we add vertex groups for each nostril bone. I assign the bottom left vertex, along with the one above it, to the bottom left nostril bone. Then we assign the leftmost vertex, third from the bottom, to the top left nostril bone. We do the equivalent for the right side. Now you can see by moving the bottom nostril bones, we can almost extrude the sides of the nose out. And by moving the top nostril bones, we can sharpen up the corners of the nostrils. I was unhappy with the shape that they created, so I played around with some settings, like the resolution of the lattice. This meant I had to reassign all the vertices to their vertex groups. Also, I changed the scale of the lattice, among other things. Now that we're happy with the shape, we're ready to animate them in the actions and assign action constraints. Here is the fix that I mentioned in the previous video where we delete the animation in the actions for the glabella line bones, we go on to remove the action constraints, then we duplicate the bones above the originals and assign the action constraints to the copies. Now back to the refinement. We do a similar thing to the head lattice as we did to the nose. We add a chin bone, then we add a vertex group to the head lattice and assign the appropriate vertices. Now we just have to animate them in the head turn actions and copy the action constraints over. And there we go, we have a fully rigged character head ready to animate. Congratulations if you've managed to follow along and create your own character. Before we go, there is one more feature we will add. The ability for our character to speak. To start off, we will add some new materials to the base head grease pencil object for the mouth. A dark red tone for the inside of the mouth, a lighter red for the tongue, and an off-white for the teeth. In the grease pencil mode of the Dobe Sheet Editor, we will be able to see the various frames of our mouth. Currently, there is only the rest pose present. We will draw all the necessary shapes, at least the 10 for English sounds, each on a different frame. If you want, you could have each section of the mouth, the back, tongue, teeth, and lines all on separate layers. Here, we will simply keep them all on the one layer by drawing them in order from back to front. So, on the head base object, under the modifier panel, we add a time offset modifier. We set the mode to Fixed Frame. By sliding the frame property back and forth, you can see how it changes the mouth shape. We will use a control bone to manipulate this property. In the armature, we add a new control bone and move it off to the side. We then add a limit location constraint in the same way we did for our blink controls. Now, back on our head object, under the Time Offset modifier, we right-click on the frame value and select Add Driver. In the menu that appears under the Variable panel, select the armature, then the mouth control bone, and select Local X Location. Above this panel, there is an equation that uses this variable 
to set the value of the frame property. By default, this is set to var plus zero. This means that the frame value will be the same as the X location of the control bone. Because of the scale at which we have drawn our character, the control bone would need to be moved quite a distance to affect the mouth position. For convenience sake, we set the equation to var times tan. You may require a different value depending on your character's scale. Now, we don't have to move our control bone as far to change our mouth shapes. So that's our character complete, or at least the head. You can see that by using the techniques that we've used so far, you can continue on to create the entire body. I've left a link to the final blend file in the description, so you can try it out and examine the rig for yourself. In the next video, we will see the basic workflow that can be achieved when animating this type of character. And I'll show you how to automatically lip sync your character to your audio using a Blender plugin called Rhubarb. If you have followed along and made your own character, I would love to see what you came up with. So go ahead and show off your grease pencil creations by leaving links in the comments. Please feel free to ask any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon.